to the business executive, the grandmother, the college student, the teenager, the factory worker. Wow, those hands get around. But many merchants don't guard against these hands, even though they annually steal $2 billion, more than all the nation's burglars and stick-up men combined. They are the hands of the shoplifter. In Color, starring Telly Savalas as Ron Sticky Fingers Johnston. Tune in next week for an all-new Shoplifter. Highway Safety Foundation, stay in your lane. Literally. Paul V. Brothers of Brothers Brothers Protection Services. Based on the novel Five Finger Discount by Richard Bachman. Excuse me. Uh, your business is selling merchandise, right? That's a filthy lie and you can't prove it. Yes, it is. That's right. Yes, and merchandising is the way to do it. Yes. Appealing displays, easy to serve oneself, and make them want it. I'm sorry, what are we talking about? Unfortunately, many customers take this serve yourself too literally. These Tron Pogs are mine. And about one of every 60 customers entering your store will want it so badly, they will attempt to steal it. And so inconspicuously. The knows the hand is quicker than the eye. The eye what? of an <laughs> unobservant salesperson. It's the hands that do the stealing. Hail Mary, full of grace. The amateur shoplifter may steal because she can't resist an opportunity to get something for nothing. Because of need. For the thrill of it. For luxuries. For psychological reasons. For double dog dares. Shoplifters come from all economic levels. Uh, sir, that's your own wallet. Okay. The most active days are Friday and Saturday. Opening and closing hours and lunch hour are choice times because that's when alertness by sales personnel is usually the lowest. Thanks, these are hot tips. But who steals, why and when they steal makes little difference to the salesperson who does the most efficient job possible. Oh, a chart, great. Alertness and courtesy by you are the greatest deterrents to shoplifters. Also snipers. And it goes without saying that protecting your store's profits enhances your opportunity for salary increases. And it directly affects you as a customer in other stores, since shoplifting losses are added to the price of merchandise. I'll keep my 47 cents, thank you very much. Here you see actual footage of a professional shoplifter at work. Oh. She is about to commit a theft. I brought this card no from home. No one in the supermarket knows what is taking place. She stacks these stakes neatly. Too neatly. Too, too neatly. To an unobservant salesperson, she may appear to be an average housewife. But an alert salesperson will notice the large coat, full skirt, and big purse. Maybe she's just chilly. These make for quick and easy concealment of merchandise. So far, all she's stolen is my heart. Notice how easily she slips the stakes under her dress, holding them between her legs. Oh, okay. Like, the whole time? That's impressive, actually. This is one of the many methods of boosting, the professional term for shoplifting. Oh. And it's the most common technique employed by the female pro. The Kegel Bandit. Given enough privacy, she can make off with portable television sets. What? Typewriters, radios, tape recorders, and small appliances just as easy. Um, wow. She can steal items weighing as much as 25 pounds. How much is that in dollars? She buys one or two inexpensive items to cover her presence in the store. It is folly for retail merchants to attempt to cut selling and operating costs by reducing the number of sales personnel. That's what I've always An said. An adequate sales force ensures good customer service and is far less expensive than losses to shoplifters. What this shoplifter can steal in seconds will more than pay the daily wage of a good salesperson. This actual footage is really well shot. By stealing cartons of cigarettes, this professional can easily earn $100 a day. She earns as much or more when working drug stores, clothing stores, hardware or discount stores. Well, she's a busy beaver. This woman represents a growing number of shoplifters who are taking advantage of the self-service store. 
the removal of barriers between goods and customers and the improved display techniques which are psychologically designed to increase buying. So this lady's just standing up to the man. Although the professional makes up only about 10% of those stealing from you, the dollar value of what they steal far exceeds that of the amateur shoplifter. Oh, you gotta go pro. Pros usually steal expensive items, later selling them for about half the retail price. And where would one go to the find that? The security chief of one large department store believes one professional shoplifter is more costly than 100 amateurs, while some store managers claim the small but frequent theft of the amateur is their greatest loss. Hey, there's room for everybody. Smaller stores can't afford security personnel, and boosters know it. They are also quick to recognize sales personnel working on commission, because a stall will usually send them scurrying to a hotter sales prospect. And that's what the shoplifter wants privacy. Oh, sickos. But regardless of who is the greatest threat to store profits, the amateur or the professional, most shoplifters can be deterred by observant sales personnel who acknowledge all customers. <laughs> Keep dreaming. Letting no one go unrecognized. Personnel who treat everyone as a customer. Mm, pass. This professional will be the first to admit that the presence of an observant, alert salesperson would have sent her away empty-handed. Empty thigh gap. This is the merchandise she carried out of the store. However, she neglected to pay for these items. Well, maybe she thought they were samples. Thank you so much for watching Fun with Shorts. This series is supported by Patreon and patrons like these wonderful people right here. They get early access to new episodes and exclusive episodes every month. Also, check out the updated funwithshorts.com for DVDs and merch and all the good stuff. Thank you so much, everybody. I'll see you next time.